Hey and welcome, here's a tutorial on how to debug your Python scripts with Visual Studio Code. Okay, I added this Python script to my folder in Visual Studio Code and I defined a class called user. The user has a name and an email that are defined as private members, two get methods for these and a method called do something that prints out hi from username. The string representation of the user is name, comma, email. Very simple so far, I add two users to a list then I loop over this list and call do something for each user. Or better I use the string representation of the user here in the do something method. Alright, so let's start this. I have code runner installed. I press Ctrl, Alt and N. And here's the output hi from username, comma, email address. Now if you want to debug this, you go to the debug menu and press start debugging. Or you can use the shortcut F5. Now on the sidebar, the debugging tab is enabled and the code is executed with debugging. But of course we didn't stop anywhere because there are no breakpoints set. But before we add any breakpoints, let me show you how to add different debugging configurations. You could just press this button here to add the default launch JSON file to add the default debugging configurations. Now we have the option for example to debug the current file by using the integrated terminal or you can for instance attach the debugger to a different Python process that runs on a web server. But for this tutorial I will use the first config to debug the current file. Ok, with that setting, let's add our first breakpoint here to the init method of the user class. You can see that there is a breakpoint added here in the breakpoint section in the lower left hand corner. Now press F5 to debug the script and the execution is stopped at our breakpoint. Now you can see in the local section on the left side the name and the email which are the parameters of the init function. And when you hover with the cursor over these variables, you can see the values as overlay. Now a step over this line where the name is assigned, you can use this button or press F10. You can also step into or out of the stack, but a step over this line and a hover over the member variable underscore name. And in the overlay, you can see that the value test user is assigned now. And this is shown in the local section as well. Alright, what you can also do is to add variables to the watch. I select the users list here, right click and choose debug add to watch. And when the users are assigned, you can analyze the values in the watch panel. Okay, the next thing I do is to add a breakpoint to the do something method. Then I hit this button here to continue the script or you can press F5 alternatively but when the breakpoint is hit the execution is stopped again and you can analyze your code in the debugger. But sometimes you don't want to stop the execution of your script but you want to log some values. So what the most developers do is to print out these values on the console. This method is also called the poor man's debugger but there's a nice trick to avoid these print statements in your code. Let's add the breakpoint here again, but I right click it and choose edit breakpoint. What I can do now is to configure the breakpoint to use an expression. I will show this later on. You can also stop at a certain hit count or what I want to show now is to use the lock message as an alternative for the print statements. So choose lock message and as text I use exactly the same string as I did for the print statement. I write hi from. And then I want to add the name and the email, the string representation of the self variable. And this can be done by adding the self variable that is around by curly brackets. The print method I remove and replace it for example by the pass statement. Now press F5 to debug my script again. You can see that the execution is not stopped and there is no output. But when I change to the debug console, I can see the output of the log message defined by the breakpoint. So this is a very useful method if you don't want to stop the execution of the script but you want to log instead. Ok, the next thing that I want to show you is expressions that are also known as conditional breakpoints. I set a breakpoint here to the init method. Then I right click and choose edit breakpoint as before. But now I choose expression and what I do now is to add a condition under which the execution of the script is stopped. For example, I want to stop only if the name of the user is test user. When you hover over the breakpoint, you can see the expression. Then I press F5 to start the script and the breakpoint is hit. This is done because the name of the first user is test user. 
but then I hit F5 to continue and the breakpoint isn't hit anymore because there is no other test user. I can tell you I use these conditional breakpoints a lot, there are many situations when you're just interested in special information. Ok, the last thing that I want to show you is to configure your debugger in a way that it stops when exceptions are raised. So you just select raised exceptions, then I raise for example a value error instead of the path statement, then I press F5 to debug and you can see that the debugger pops up when this exception is raised. Now you can go ahead at this point of execution and debug your code. Of course in the real world you don't raise an exception to debug, there might be an exception and you don't know where it comes from, then you can use the debugger at this point, for example to analyze the call stack to find the problem. So this is what I want to show you to get started with the debugger in Visual Studio Code and Python. I really hope you find this useful and if you do then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching guys, perhaps you consider supporting me on my Patreon, this would really help this channel grow. Please add your feedback to the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.